How's it going, Glenn? Pretty good. I'm surviving. Where are we at right now? To me, this is action pursuit games. And it used to be? This was Survival Sports Incorporated back in the day. Later, it became action paintball games. Then later on, it was shoot to thrill for a while. Uh, it's been a lot of different field names. <laughs> What's the rifle that you have there? I'm not really, I don't know what they call it. One like this is what I pattern my first ones off of, my first semis off of. Where did you see one? June 1988, out in Newburgh, New York, the Big Apple Open. And you were there, is that when you were playing with the Ironman at that event? Yeah, I, yes it was. And you saw one at, what booth was it? Adventure Game Supply. Yeah. A guy named Dave Craig was showing it off, but it wasn't even close to as completed as this one. Yeah. But it had this kind of hardware on it. I'd already been working on one, and. When I saw what they had, it clicked, and I went, ha, I know how to finish this. So yeah. made a deal with them, got some parts, and built one. Can you tell me a little bit about the rifle that you were working on before you maybe saw this? I was trying to build one like a regular gas-operated firearm, pulling air off of the valve during the firing, but basically it cycled too fast. It had to be force-fed, and we didn't have that option back then. I just kind of set it aside. You mentioned that you tried using like an air assisted feed to feed it with paintballs a little. Oh, it was just, that was the only way I could get it to feed it. Put an air in the top of a uh -huh. piece of PVC and force fed it. Yeah. And it would, it would actually fire paintballs, but yeah. that wasn't what I was after. But you also mentioned that it was a KP2 and on the KP2, the, the side tube is actually what you turned into the air a cylinder. Piece, a piece of it, yeah. I didn't have a machine shop back then. I had a drill press and some odds and ends stuff. I, I'm, a, I'm a gunsmith, you know, I had hand tools. Uh -huh. So, you know, between a hacksaw and my table saw, I cut up some stuff and made it work. Yeah, it worked, but it just cycled too fast and it wasn't really anything that could work at the time. It wasn't what I was looking for for a paintball gun. Yeah. Yeah, it was just, it was too fast, I couldn't feed it. Yeah. So, it's... I just kind of dropped it. And you had experience working with pneumatics when you were... In the overhead door business, yeah. Well, I did doors automatic doors in general. So how would those work? Well, it's like in the, back in those days, a, a typical supermarket uh -huh. door sliding open, yeah. those were all pneumatic. You step on the mat and uh -huh. that was the same as like pulling the trigger. And then like I say, the whole thing to me just kind of clicked all at once. And I went, okay, fine. And I showed them how to, I tried to show them. I, I built one for me and then said here. And they said, oh, well, we're not gonna go with it. It's too complicated. To David. Too, yeah, to Dave Craig. And so you saw their rifle and you knew, okay, they're doing all these things wrong. Can you point some of those out? Well, the, the biggest one is the four way that they used is spring load and spring return. There's no way to time it. Yeah. That was the biggest thing on the gun, plus the, <laughs> the big regulator and all that. Uh -huh. And the first one I built, I built the regulator out of a piece of the bottom tube. To me, it all had to go in the gun, not on the gun. Yeah. <laughs> this is more or less a KP2 that has a kit added on to it rather than a complete basically gun. well i was always into rifles i played with a rifle all the time yeah and even back in these days nsg competition rules didn't allow wooden stock rifles uh-huh so i had already put a pistol grip on a rifle and that was my tournament gun. yeah what is it missing right now when we look at it well it hasn't got enough airlines on it there's no ram there's no bolt so the ram and bolt cylinder on the one that you saw, just like on this one, it would come out from- Yeah, it was sticking out the back. Sticking out just, from the back. Yeah. Yeah, and this ram is two directional. To push the ram forward and then to push the ram back. Yeah, dual acting cylinder. Yeah, and on the Elite rifle, they did it a little bit differently. Yeah, he did it with a homemade three-way with a spring return and he had a little tiny regulator that was uh -huh. from pneumatics. Yeah. And, and then- It didn't work, so. So the ram would come out the back on this and on yours, that's one thing you kind of played around at first, is having the ram out the back. When I first built Camille, yeah, that was the natural way to do it, because, oh, that's what I'd seen before, yeah. so. <laughs> and then it dawned on me that the, the cylinder would push better than it would pull. Uh huh. So when I built number two, I put it on the side. And it worked so much better that that's when I changed Camille from what it was originally into what people know it as. And then, 
on your first two, you built the low pressure regulator inside of a piece of copper tube and you soldered it on to... On the first one, it was a separate unit and soldered it to the bottom of the gun. DeBones is like that also, right? It's a separate unit. I believe so. Yeah, yeah, soldered on. And then you realize quickly though that you could just integrate that into the lower tube. Yeah. Which would, again, make it into a smaller package. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the, the first rock was actually quite a bit smaller than later model ones were. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess so, huh? The first low pressure regulators that you were making for these rifles were probably smaller than the ones that would go on the autocockers. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the first one, the one on Camille was only about that long. Yeah. And it was still built out of a piece of bottom tube, but it was a separate unit. Yeah. You know, and then uh, it was all soldered together and then soldered to the bottom of the gun uh -huh. when I did it. And then had to modify the stock to accommodate it and all that. <laughs>